I have this thing that sometimes when I tell people about the things that I've seen, then what they say is that, oh, that is actually meditation. And I'm not sure if it is meditation, um, because my plan is not to meditate. I'm simply looking at the world around me. And in an earlier, I don't know, video, it could be in this series or in something else, I have mentioned how I believe the world around is the best kind of television because there's always something going on and it's of course free to watch. That said, um, on the idea of meditation or sort of cleaning the mind of disturbances and things that you don't really need, watching something for a, preferably a repetitive process or some process that has a quiet drama to it, doing something like that can really soothe the soul. So here's an example of one of the things that um, I quite enjoyed. During the COVID uh, shutdown or the slowdown or pandemic or whatever, I would often go out to the waterfront and because everything was shut down, the places I went were places that would normally be busy. So, for example, right now, today, if I went to this place, it would be busy and you'd have a long ship there and there would be no place to sit. But back then, there was plenty of room to sit and I would sort of sit out on this pier and I'd usually go there to work and my companions were a few men fishing with fishing rods and there was a bird, I believe it was a stork or a crane, I'm not sure, the one that is very common. And that bird would always come because it knew it could get fish from the guys fishing. So I'd be there sitting to write. And quite often when I'd go out there, uh, I'd spend quite some time. So I'd go with a coffee and some water and some sandwiches and fruit and all that stuff. And on one particular day, I was there with two apples, which is no big deal, just ordinary apples. Uh, after eating the first apple, I threw it into the water. Now, I'm not doing that because I'm a hooligan, but I knew or I had realized in years previous that you could throw an apple into the water and a seagull or some duck or whatever would come and get it. So it, it wasn't, it's not as if you're throwing a hamburger into the water. So I threw this in there and from out of nowhere, basically underneath the pier, came a coot, that's one of those black uh, bird ducks or duck birds, black ones with a bit of white here, and it headed straight for the apple core. So he goes to the apple core and I'm watching this, and as it begins to nibble on the apple core, from the other side comes another coot, and this coot has decided that no, that apple core belongs to me, it does not belong to the first coot. And so it chases that first coot away, and that, you see that first coot hanging around the neighborhood, looking very, very sad, or at least it to me, it looked as if it was very sad. And the second coot is very happy, sort of nibbling away or pecking away at this apple core. It's pecking away, and then a third coot arrives. And this third coot is very bossy and has decided that that apple core belongs to it. So it goes there and it sort of makes that quacky noise, chases the second coot away, who is now also staring at the third coot looking, so the second coot is also looking miserable. The first coot is also looking miserable. And I look at this and I feel, oh, that's not so good. So I get my second apple and I begin to eat the outside. This is something that I have discovered that if you throw a whole apple in there, the coots won't touch it. Uh, you need to get the skin off and they need to see the flesh of the apple and then they will eat. So I sort of nibble around the outside, throw the second uh, apple in there. It's probably about, I don't know, what can we say, 10, 15 meters away from the first apple. And as soon as I throw that apple in, the third coot abandons the small apple and goes straight for the big one. As soon as it goes for the big one, one of the two other coots, and I, by this time I don't know which was the first or the second one, heads to the smaller apple. The coot, the third coot that had gone to the big apple, sees this one head to the small apple and thinks, no, that apple is mine and this apple is mine. So it goes to that first apple, chase that one away. As it chases that one away, another coot, one of the first two, goes to the big apple. So you suddenly end up with this sort of Laurel and Hardy slapstick nonsense in which you have three coots, uh, you have one coot trying to eat two apples at once, which are quite far apart, which is completely impossible. And every time it chases 
one of the other coots away to get to its apple, that coot will go to the other apple, or the other coot will go to that apple. And you just see this thing happening, 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 and I'm watching this, and I'm probably smiling. And eventually, from way over on the left side, comes this fourth coot, and this fourth coot is the OG. This is the coot of coots, because this coot has such authority, it makes a noise, and the third coot decides, look, I'm not going to challenge this one. So that fourth coot goes to the, the first, uh, the, the second apple, the big apple. And now you have three coots left to quarrel about the other apple, which is what they do. They begin to quarrel and quarrel, and eventually two of them leave, deciding that it's just not worth it. They're, there's food elsewhere. And so I watched this, and I realized this whole process has taken about 35 minutes. I've just been watching these coots go up and down. And there has been nothing in my head but the fact that I didn't know these creatures could be so greedy, greedy as in like us. How, uh, how often have you been in a playground watching children or grandchildren where there's a kid who gets hold of a tricycle here and then sees another kid on the tricycle over there and decides, well, I have to go on that tricycle, so they go to that tricycle. When they go to that tricycle, the kid comes to this tricycle, and that kid who got, went to that tricycle has to run back to this one. You know, this kind of greed. And I was quite happy to see this in animals, because sometimes we humans, you have to look at us and wonder why are we here. We have, quite, we have some very, very peculiar habits which aren't very helpful, greed being one of them. And it just made me happy to realize that we are not alone in this whole process. So turning or coming all the way back to the beginning, this idea of people saying that looking is meditation, I can't call it that because I, I just don't have the qualifications to call it anything other than looking. What I can say is that if you have the chance, if you have three or four minutes somewhere, five minutes, just stop and look at something in nature, be it grass blowing in the breeze, be it bees going to flowers, or pollinating or doing their whole dance with flowers, be it seagulls you know, flying up uh, above, or if you're in Amsterdam or where there are coots, throw an apple and see how the coots uh, behave. I guarantee you it will ease whatever internal pressure you have. Uh, even though I'm guaranteeing this, please don't come to me if it doesn't. <laughs> But uh, I'm quite sure it will do that. So keep looking, unplug, open your ears, open your eyes, and you will calm down.